All right, welcome to part two of Judaism teaching, and we are resuming our lesson here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Part two, basic teachings of Judaism. There's a couple here. So we have monotheism. We already know what this is if you are in um, Christianity. Monotheism is a central idea. Basically, God exists, and also God is one. There is only one God. Not two, not three, not five thousand, just one God. That is monotheism in a nutshell. Then there's a covenant. Covenant is a central idea to Judaism. Without this covenant-keeping God, you don't have Judaism. And also without a covenant-keeping God, you don't have Christianity. So covenant is a huge, huge, huge idea within Judaism. God makes covenants with people. So you have a relationship with God. God does not just stand off in the distance. God does not just um, chill and relax and not care about people. He wants a relationship. He wants a um, partnership with his creation. He makes covenants with Abraham. He made a covenant with Moses, and he made a covenant with David. Those are the three most significant covenants in the Bible, Abraham, Moses, and David. And so covenant is central to Judaism. God wants to partner with people. I love this picture. God is not standoffish. He uses people to accomplish his purpose. And we believe that as Christians, but Judaism is the forerunner for that thought. And we've inherited that because Judaism was kind of the precursor to Christianity. And so it just begs the question to ask, what does God want to partner with you about? What does God want to partner with you about today? Another teaching on Messiah. Messiah is critical. There have been rumors of the Messiah since the time of Moses. This is whenever this time, this doctrine of the Messiah began to take, kind of be first introduced, but the doctrine of the Messiah, I guess, didn't get, uh, begin to take shape until later. But Messiah is a huge portion of what it means to be Jewish and a follower of Judaism. Um, and so you're expecting a Messiah. So a Savior will come to deliver the people of Israel and bring peace on the earth. That's the idea of the Messiah, that there is one coming who will deliver the people, save them from physical oppression, uh, emotional oppression, whatever, save the people and begin to bring peace on the entire earth, not just for that community of Israel, but the entire earth. And then you have this tukun olam. This is the repairing of the world. This is something that every single person on the earth can participate in, but this is central for the mission of what it means to be Jewish, that we are all in this together to repair the world. Because it was at one time perfect, but now it is not perfect. And so we have a responsibility as human beings to repair the world, and it will ultimately be repaired whenever the Messiah comes back and whenever he makes his appearance, that's whenever the world will be ultimately restored and repaired and everything. So Tin Kum Alam is the repairing of the world and that's something that every Jewish person takes charge in. That's the mission of why we're here, what we're doing on this earth. Ethical behavior is another thing. So Judaism teaches that there is a specific way to live in the world that's there's a lot of religions that teach ethical behavior, so this is not unique to Judaism, but it is a central idea because you do see examples of this with the Ten Commandments and Levitical laws. And so you see that ethical behavior, making sure that you're doing what is right, making sure you behave in a specific way, is stressed in Judaism. Circumcision at birth, if you don't know, God made a covenant with Abraham in the book of Genesis, and that covenant was a covenant that eventually uh, introduced this practice of circumcision um, eight days after every single male was born. That's something that was only found in the Jewish culture at that time, and no other uh, civilization really practiced that, to my knowledge. And so it was one of the ways that God used um, circumcision to set his people apart from all the rest of the nations. Bar mitzvah in adulthood, whenever you became 13, um, you became a son of the commandment. So that's whenever that was kind of the kind of the uh, welcome to the life of an adult son 
Um, you need to become, you need to take responsibility, you're responsible for your actions, and you need to become an adult. And so Bar Mitzvah was kind of this sending off into the real world, or welcoming, I should say, into the world of adulthood. Sabbath is a critical teaching and a critical path, uh, practice. It's a rest period beginning sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Um, Sabbath is so central to what it means to be Jewish. Uh, if you have any Jewish friends or heard stories of Jewish people, uh, whenever they work, they leave work on Fridays a little bit early if they need to to make sure, especially during daylight savings time, to make sure that they are inside their house ready to celebrate and welcome in the Sabbath before the sun goes down because that's the rule, that's the law. That Sabbath begins sundown Friday and to sundown on Saturday. Um, it's 24 hours thereabout, and uh, it is very, 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 very important um, for the functioning of society. Later this week, you're going to read an article. That'll be on Wednesday, Thursday, and then on Friday, there's going to be an assignment with a video of a guy named John Mark Homer that's going to talk about the Sabbath, so I'll let you guys um, read that stuff, and I'll shut up on the Sabbath for right now. Comparison to Christianity, this is where the rubber meets the road. How do the two compare? Are there similarities? Yes. Are there differences? A few, which is very central to salvation. So similar practices, prayer. Jews will pray. Christians will pray, should pray. Make sure you're praying. you got a lot of time during these days cooped up for the coronavirus quarantine. Worship is essential. Worshiping God for who he is, I, I encourage you, spend some time and worship over the next couple days and weeks. Fasting, maybe even if you feel like God's calling you to fast for wisdom, fast for direction, fast for healing in your body, healing somebody else, yield to that. Uh, fasting is giving up something for the sake of seeking some spiritual significance, um, spiritual direction. Um, or just becoming more in love, falling more in love with our God. Eternity, eternity is in, uh, in respect to heaven and hell. So Judaism believes in heaven, but most do not believe in hell. So there's eternal life, but there's not this place of eternal death, as um, Christianity would say. The ultra-righteous will go immediately to heaven, so those who have been kind of purified, lived a good life, boom, they immediately get into the pearly gates of heaven. However, those that need a little bit of extra time, they're not ultra-righteous, they go to a place called Gehenna, and it's a place for sin, for cleansing of sin that remains in our souls. So it's almost like a um, car wash before you get in, for lack of a better illustration. So some people are already washed clean because of how they lived and what, what they did, and other people are not so much washed clean. So they need to go to Gehenna as a place to cleanse their souls. There's references to this word in the text. You can look it up, research it a little bit. But I have not found um, many Jewish thoughts of there's a heaven and there's a hell. There's a heaven and there's this place of cleansing our souls before we get into heaven. So it's kind of like a, maybe a Catholic idea of purgatory, but it is not a Christian idea of heaven and hell. Salvation. For Judaism, uh, belief in God is essential, but also good deeds are essential for salvation. So belief in God and good deeds. So your works do save you as well as your belief in God saves you. In Christianity, it's by grace through faith. So belief in God, belief in Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. No other way is the way to salvation. That is really what it takes to be saved. Repenting of your sin following Jesus, um, but it is not, your works are not central to salvation. Um, I do believe that they are an evident expression of your salvation. But as for can works save you by, if you just did enough good works, Christianity doesn't teach that at all. There's a promised holy one in both. For Judaism, the Messiah will come who will appear in the earth and boom, He'll restore the world, bring the tunkum alam, or tinkun alam, uh, which is the repairing of the world. He will bring that, and people will participate with the Messiah in repairing the world. But the Messiah has not come yet in Judaism, whereas in Christianity, 
We believe that Jesus is the Messiah and he has a second coming that will happen at the end of the age or the day of the Lord. Then we also believe in the resurrection of Christ. Um, Judaism does not say the resurrection happened, which is very interesting because we learned through our talk about the resurrection that it did happen. Judaism will reject it hardcore and say that people made up lies about the fact that Jesus' body was Jesus rose from the dead. They say the disciples stole the body or that uh, they were just making up the story, whatever. But Christianity says that it did happen, that Jesus did bodily rise from the dead, and there is good reason to believe that. And we looked at the evidence um, through Geisler's text that we've been reading, but also through the case for Christ, and we really came to the conclusion that it takes a whole lot more faith to dismiss the evidence than it does to accept it. And so Jesus rising from the dead is a very, very uh, well-supported, well-documented event in all of human history, which if you're going to err on one side, I'd err on the side of evidence for it rather than the uh, skepticism against it. Last comparison to Christianity, how would we witness to Jewish friends? So in the future, you're going to come across some Jewish people. So how in the world would you witness to some Jewish friends um, to help lead them into a relationship with Jesus? The first step, and I would say for any witnessing adventure, uh, follow the leading of the Spirit. Before you go out, before you talk, in the middle while you're talking, say a prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit to say for words to say, what to say, when to say it, for compassion, for the right response, the right questions. The Spirit is the great evangelist. The Spirit is the great teacher. The Spirit is everything that we need for the moment. Our wisdom fails us. Our questions fails us. Our strategies fail us. The Spirit does not fail. The Spirit knows exactly what needs to be said in a moment. So yield to the Spirit. Ask God to help you as you witness to Jewish friends, Muslim friends, atheist friends, um, to share the gospel with them. Maybe even you reach out today, tomorrow, this week to somebody uh, you know is not a Christian and just begin asking the Holy Spirit to give you words to say, verses to bring, questions to ask anything to them. So follow the Spirit first and foremost. And then uh, if the conversation leads, emphasize that Jesus is the Messiah. And how would you do that? You would bring um, a couple different examples, mainly use scripture. Now, again, we see that the Jewish faith reads the Old Testament, so it's really good to bring some Old Testament scriptures in there. Um, so this idea that Jesus is the Messiah can be documented through some Old Testament things, and then also flip into the New Testament, and you'll see that um, it's well supported there as well. So maybe stick with the Old Testament for uh, your Jewish friends. But some things about Jesus as the Messiah, they said that he become from, come from the seed of Abraham. Um, God told Abraham that all of his offspring would be blessed, and that comes through Jesus the Messiah. Then the tribe of Judah, Genesis 49.10, when Judah's mentioned there. The seed of David, Jeremiah 23.5 is a good verse to use there, um, that he would be a prophet like Moses. Deuteronomy 18.15 is a good one to use there. Maybe even the Acts passage, because that's some Jewish... Uh, people talking, Peter and John are preaching there. Raised from the dead, Psalm 16, David talks about this. Um, experienced crucifixion, David talks about this again in Psalm 22, 1 through 31. It's a very graphic depiction of crucifixion. And then also the new and everlasting covenant that he will bring and God was making with his people, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. And Hebrews 8, 6 through 13 talk about that. So this is a good way to use uh, some scripture to support that Jesus is the Messiah because that's the dilemma in Judaism. They do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah and therefore they reject him. And that's so crucial for us as Christians because we believe that salvation is contingent upon Jesus being the Messiah, Jesus being the Son of God and belief in him and receiving the forgiveness of sins that comes from Jesus is the only way to be saved. So that's Judaism in a nutshell. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you take notes and use your notes on the assignment, uh, the quiz in the assignment category, online test category this week. Please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. Love you guys. Peace out.